Hi, hello and welcome back to F1 Challenge Career Mode. My name is Mephisto and today we're heading off to Australia for the opening round of the 2001 Formula 1 season. But before we begin, I would like to talk a little bit about a few changes I have made. First, let's get the obvious out of the way. If you look at the background image, you can probably tell that I will be driving for BAR this season. As stated at the end of my last video, I used a random number generator and the number it generated was the number I assigned to BAR. Ok, now on to the actual changes and the first thing I want to talk about is difficulty settings. In the last few days I did a lot of testing and I mean a lot of testing. And I finally found a difficulty setting that better suits my skill level, which goes without saying is absolutely rubbish. But now I should be able to be a bit more competitive, I should be able to score points more often. That is to say if I don't crash, which I probably will, quite a lot. The second change I made is to the way I qualify. Until now I only did two flying laps, one around 30 minutes into the session and one near the end of the session. However, I decided that from now on I will take full advantage of the qualifying session. There's really no reason not to. So that, coupled with the revised difficulty setting, should put me in better positions on the starting grid. And finally, I made the races slightly longer. I went from 25% races to 35% races, which should balance out the reduction in difficulty. Longer races mean a higher risk of me doing something embarrassingly stupid. All this was done in the hopes of providing more exciting races and hence more entertaining videos. So with all that said, let's get started. Just before the free practice session begins, let's take a quick look at the Drivers' Championship. Michael Schumacher starts the season determined to add a fourth World Drivers' title to his resume. Many already consider him to be the best driver ever in the history of Formula One. Teammate Rubens Barrichello, not to mention double world champion Mika Hakkinen and David Coulthard, are undoubtedly the main competitors Michael will be considering. But with so many talented drivers on the grid, no one really knows who is going to be competing at the sharp end just yet. Juan Pablo Montoya, Kimi Raikkonen, Fernando Alonso and Enrique Bernaldi are all starting their Formula One careers here in Australia. The new kids on the block will be keen to impress both experienced drivers and Formula One fans the world over. Well, that covers the drivers. Let's take a quick look at the constructors next. Ferrari are hoping to end the season with a third consecutive World Constructors title. Jean Tott couldn't be better equipped for such a challenge, with triple world champion Michael Schumacher and Rubens Barrichello behind the wheel of the F2001. McLaren are likely to be Ferrari's main rivals, but Williams have really been talking up the new FW22. Their driver lineup, consisting of hotshot rookie kart world champion Juan Pablo Montoya and Ralph Schumacher, should certainly be a force to be reckoned with. Elsewhere, the grid remains the same as last season. Unlike 1999 and 2000, there are no new teams joining us on the Formula One circus this year. Located in downtown Melbourne, the spectacular Albert Park circuit combines several short straights with fast, sweeping turns. Unlike most street circuits, there is not a single 90-degree turn or hairpin in sight. I hate to quote the marketing pundits, but this venue really is a great place for the race. And we jump straight into qualifying, and on my first try I felt that I was doing fairly well, although I still needed to get used to the new car. But that was a 135.943, which was pretty decent I would say. Around 10 minutes later I went out for a second attempt. This time I thought I was quite slower, but that lap time was 135.864 seconds, almost one tenth of a second faster, which doesn't sound like much, but it is. Every tenth of a second counts. Now this is my final attempt, I actually did one more before this, but that was around one second slower than what I had previously done. 
However, this one proved to be my fastest time of the session, with a 134.973 seconds. So that's pretty good I would say. See you on the grid. Hello there. Welcome to Australia for the opening round of the 2001 FIA Formula One World Championship. The weather, as so often is the case here, is just wonderful. Over 30 degrees and climbing, it's a fantastic day for Formula One. Juan Pablo Montoya, first. Michael Schumacher, second. Mika Hakkinen, third. Coulthard, fourth. Ralph Schumacher, fifth. Barrichello, sixth. The BAR driver endured a lackluster qualifying session and faces a tough start in the midst of the chasing pack. He starts seventh. Kimi Raikkonen, eighth. Nick Heidfeld, ninth. Frensen, tenth. Irvine, eleventh. Trulli, twelfth. Button, thirteenth. Olivier Panis was way off the pace of his teammate. He starts in fourteenth. Fernando Alonso, fifteenth. Jos Verstappen, sixteenth. Giancarlo Fisichella, seventeenth. Jean Alesi, eighteenth. Bertie, 19th. Dolorosa, 20th. Enrique Bernaldi, 21st. Marquez, 22nd. And here we are on the grid, starting from a very impressive 7th place. Ralph Schumacher is right in front of me, next to me is Raikkonen, and right behind me is Heidfeld. The lights go out, Heidfeld taps me from behind. Luckily he didn't damage my car. As we raced down into turn 1, I was hoping to gain a few places, but that proved a bit difficult. However, I kept close to Barrichello in the hopes that he would make a mistake, which would grant me 6th place. I had a look on the inside, but Barrichello went defensive. Well done on his part. But now, let's have another look at the start. Massive wheel spin from my part, which led to Heidfeld bumping into me. Fortunately, that didn't damage the car. As we came through turn 1, Heidfeld was having a look on the inside. He even cut the corner, but I managed to stay in 7. I really was hoping to gain at least one place, but oh well. Next, we have a replay of a little incident between Trulli and Raikkonen at the start. Trulli slightly tapped the rear of the Sauber. Thankfully, that was all that happened. First lap incursions are generally bad. Well, they all are. So, that was what happened during the start. For the rest of this lap, I was trying to stay close to Barrichello as much as possible. However, it seemed that my Honda engine was no match. Then, as we came through the chicane, I thought I could dive bomb Barrichello, but I decided against it. And good thing I did, because there was no way I could possibly make that maneuver without causing an accident. And that is definitely something you don't want. Least of all this early on in the race. Actually, you don't want an accident regardless on whether it's the first lap or the last. Oh, and I think I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video that I replaced Jacques Villeneuve, who was relegated to second driver for some reason, and that my teammate is Olivier Panis. But I guess that you guys figured out that one by now, just by looking at the race lineup. Anyway, as we were coming around to finish our first lap, I was still in 7th with Barrichello in front and Heidfeld behind. And although 7th was a pretty nice place to be in, I wanted to start off the season by scoring at least a few points. So now that I had a goal in mind, it was time to find the means to achieving that goal. The chase was on. On lap 3, I was finally able to pass Rubens Barrichello, so that moved me up into 6th, which meant 1 point. Next I had the Williams of Ralf Schumacher who was around 2 seconds ahead. On lap 5, I was still chasing after Ralf Schumacher, who was slowly pulling away, and as I entered this right-hander, I mounted the curb a bit too much, which offset the balance of the car, and that made it possible for Barrichello to regain 6th. And I was so focused on catching Schumacher that I didn't even realize how close Barrichello was. But on lap 6, I got another opportunity to overtake Barrichello, 
However, I didn't have enough confidence through this vast chicane, but luckily Barrichello messed up his exit, helping me to get a bit closer. Then, using his slipstream, I flew past. Unfortunately, I ended up outbreaking myself. So, Barrichello got ahead, and so did Heidfeld. But I was not about to go down without a fight. On lap 7, as I was chasing Heidfeld and Barrichello, Nick Heidfeld clipped the rear of the Ferrari, causing them to spin and allowing me to pass. Turns out, if you put enough pressure on the AI, they will make mistakes. Let's have another look at that. So, here are Barrichello, Heidfeld and myself. Barrichello actually cut in front of the Sauber, he should have just kept to his line. That was a pretty dangerous maneuver. I remember Damon Hill doing that a couple of times to Schumacher back in his days at Williams. And almost always it ended up with Hill having to retire. Although Schumacher also pulled that on Hill a number of times. Most notably in Adelaide at the end of the 94 season. I was now on lap 9 and chasing Ralph Schumacher who was around 6 seconds ahead. And Hakkinen who we just saw was having difficulties with his car. Which was great news for me. And here is a replay of Mika Hakkinen. He was chasing Michael Schumacher and Juan Pablo Montoya, however his suspension gave way and he had to retire. That's not how you want to start off the session, but luckily for me that moved me up into 5th. And I was quite pleased with the situation at that moment, but I wanted a little bit more, so I decided that I would push a little bit harder. And I totally messed up that corner. At the end of lap 10, I had to come in for fuel and tires. I entered the pits in 5th and I really wanted to know where I would be once I rejoined. And I kind of missed my parking space. At this point the race was halfway done and I said to myself I really need to push hard. And after 10.4 seconds in the pits, I was ready to rejoin the race as Jensen Button was quickly closing in. Was I able to make it into turn 1 before Button did? Well yes, but it was really close. I only just managed to reach turn 1 before he did, but that meant that I could keep him behind me. Incidentally, I rejoined the track in 9th. On lap 14, I was back up in 6th place, courtesy of the AI having to pit. At the same time, Juan Pablo Montoya, who was leading the race, was having problems with his car. And that was him in the middle of the track. So that gave me 5th, and potentially 4th, with a few cars still having to pit. But here is Montoya in his Williams, a puff of white smoke back there, and now his engine was really starting to let out smoke. And that was the Ferrari of Michael Schumacher taking the lead. What a shame, Montoya was doing so well throughout the race. Things like this was what made F1 so great back in the day. The unpredictability of it all made everything so fun. Sadly, we don't get to see stuff like that anymore, and that is quite a shame. At the end of lap 14, I caught sight of first place David Coulthard, who I made my next target. But in the meantime, Truly was having problems with his car. Let's see a replay. Here is the Jordan of Jarno Trulli. He was coming around to finish his lap. Unfortunately for him, his engine had enough. And it was all over for the Jordan driver. And we see Rubens Barrichello in the background coming around to pass the damaged Jordan. And so is Heidfeld. So, we are now on lap 15. With 5 more to go and David Coulthard just 2 seconds ahead, I made it my mission to pass him before the end of the race. Decision I will come to regret. I started pushing harder and harder with each passing lap and made mistakes as well. At this point I should have just settled for my current position, but I wanted a podium finish. And so, just as we were starting our final lap, I lost my brakes on my front left wheel, which was absolutely devastating. And with only 3 working brakes, it was going to be a very, very difficult final lap. Coulthard was now pulling away and Barrichello was closing in fast. And to add insult to injury, I went slightly off onto the grass, offsetting the balance of the car and sending me into a spin and into the barrier, breaking both my wings. So now I was driving a car with brakes on only 3 sides and no wings to provide any downforce and I was becoming increasingly frustrated. And now Barrichello is right on my gearbox and he obviously overtook me. I was not happy at this point but I had it coming to be honest. And there goes 4th and 5th as I was busy spinning around. Serves me right I guess. So here I was coming around to finish my final lap. 
Amazingly enough, I managed to finish in the top 10, I finished 9th actually, and there I go for another spin. So yeah, I finished 9th, which isn't bad all things considered, but since I was in 4th for most of the second half of the race, I was really, really disappointed. It would have been nice to start off the season with 3 points, however, greed got the best of me. Even when I realized that I wouldn't be able to catch up to Coulthard, I was still pushing really hard instead of just settling for 4th, and that ultimately led to pushing my car too much, which in turn led to the loss of the front lap brake. Anyway, let's see the standings. Well, that's the end of a fantastic Australian Grand Prix. Here are the final results. Michael Schumacher first. Ralph Schumacher second. David Coulthard third. Rubens Barrichello fourth. Nick Heidfeld fifth. Irvine sixth. The BAR driver ninth. With the results confirmed, it's high time we updated the Drivers' Championship. Schumacher moves up into first position to lead the Drivers' Championship. So, Schumacher takes the lead of the Drivers' Championship with 10 points. His brother, Ralph Schumacher, is in second with 6 points. David Coulthard is third with 4 points. Barrichello is in fourth with 3 points. Fifth is Heidfeld with 2 points. And former teammate Eddie Irvine is sixth with 1 point. Ferrari take over the lead in the Constructors' Championship. Williams are second, whilst third place is held by McLaren. On to the Constructors now. Ferrari take the lead with 13 points. Second are Williams with 6 points. Third are McLaren with 4 points. Sauber are fourth with 2 points. And Jaguar are fifth with 1 point. Really disappointing result, and I only have myself to blame for it. Instead of settling for 4th place which would have given me 3 points, I kept pushing in an attempt to get into 3rd place. That was a big mistake. But as I said, greed got the best of me. I did realize quite early on that I was not going to catch Coulthard, however that didn't stop me from trying. That is a mistake I hope I will not repeat. I could have finished the race with 3 points, but due to my blind greed, I ended up finishing with no points. And interestingly enough, I was using the largest brake ducts to maximize the reduction in brake pad wear. And yet, if you go back to the race results page, the in-game one, not the custom one, if you go there and look at the bottom of the screen where it says remaining brake pad wear, it says 0mm on the front left and 6mm on the front right. That suggests uneven braking, which is weird because I do most of my heavy braking in a straight line. Anyway, I hope that this proves to you that just because I made the game easier doesn't mean that I don't have to fight hard for a decent position. In fact, I was fighting throughout the entire race. I made it easy enough for the races to not be frustrating, but difficult enough to make racing fun. And believe me, I had a lot of fun throughout the race. I had to push hard and I was constantly under pressure from behind, which is what I like. Anyway, next time we will be returning to Malaysia and I find it quite a bit weird that they would be holding the Malaysian Grand Prix so close to the last one. Now, granted, in real life there was a gap of a little over 3 months between the final round of the 2000 season and the second round of the 2001 season, but I really feel that they are still quite close together. Especially if we consider how expensive it is to host an event as big as a Formula 1 Grand Prix. But I guess they had the reasons to do it this way. Anyway, that is it for this video. I think it's been going on for a little bit too long. So, join me next time for the second round of the season. Until then, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, stay sharp. <laughs>